Uh, to understand Shimano's involvement in catch and release fishing and tournaments, you have to basically go back 30 years. In Canada, tournament fishing was definitely in its infancy. In the U.S., it had started to move ahead and they'd already started to incorporate live release. Uh, and it fit nicely with our business plan. We were a new tackle, man relatively new tackle manufacturer, uh, making product that uh, was ideally suited for the enthusiast angler, the guys that like to fish in club events and uh, right up to pro style tournaments. And uh, so it made a lot of sense for us to get involved as a sponsor and a supporter of competitive fishing. But once we got into it and started taking a look at it, you realize pretty quickly that you also by getting involved in a public resource like we were, you had to accept the responsibility that goes along with using a public resource. You gotta look after the fish too. The very first thing that we recognized was the fact that uh, going back 30 years, most of the tournaments weighed fish uh, in and bags uh, on something akin to a meat scale, literally. And then they were uh, taken down to the end of the dock and put back into the harbor. We had to look at how we could create something that would actually function well in, in the real tournament weigh-in environment. I think it was really special in that it wasn't just scientists saying, this has to change and leaving it at that. It was an interesting relationship where we had industry working with science, and when we decided something had to change, we had the people in the room that could change it. So the first thing that we did was we came up with the concept of a live release boat and literally uh, started from scratch. We drew it up one time, sat with the people at Prince Craft out of Princeville, Quebec, uh, designed up the uh, a live release boat, and the ones that you're seeing at the Kingston Canadian Open and Fishing is, I think, the seventh generation of live release boats. And it just grew from there. I think in the old days, what tournaments used to do is, is fish got released at the dock, and uh, it didn't take long for people to realize that that probably wasn't a good idea. Um, these fish, especially smallmouth that are caught in the Canadian Open, they come from the big water out in the, out in the lake and uh, the live release boat allows those fish to be transported back to deep water where it's cooler, uh, where they can quickly recover and uh, then make their way back out into the lake. So it's actually a great tool to get the fish back into the right kind of water uh, after the tournament weigh-in and then they can make the rest of the trip themselves. Originally, without understanding really the, the relationship on diffused oxygen in the water, we just had bubblers. Now, uh, I know BASS uses oxygen. Um, I know the, uh, some of the organizations use oxygenators and bubblers and combinations and so on. Um, but basically, that's sort of the standard. Because our tournaments now are on bigger water, like Lake Ontario, we realized though that, that there was another step that we could apply and that's to have a V-hulled boat properly designed where we could take the fish out in rough water and release them and that's where the, the, the seventh generation of live release boat comes from that we're pretty proud of. It's a really cool rig. Based on our science, another big improvement has been oxygen is now, it's now mandatory for tournaments in Ontario to measure oxygen in live release boats. Uh, live release boats work great but uh, there are so many big fish that go into them at some of these events that it's really important to keep an eye on the oxygen levels. And based on our information, uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources actually said that they thought it was a good idea to make it mandatory to measure oxygen in a live release boat. And so I think it's actually another really good thing that's come out of some of the science that we've done. Uh, we, try to find, we try to find areas where uh, they can disperse and where the water quality is, is the best. I guess that's probably the simplest way to describe it. Um, you know, you don't want to let them go inside a harbor. You don't want to let them go in water that's too warm. You don't want to let them go in water that's way too cold, although that's usually not an issue. I guess it's just an instinctual thing. Every time I pull the plug on the live release boat and the water starts rushing out, you would think that those fish would be going woo-hoo and going right through the hole. And they don't. They go against the current. They try to stay in the tank. It's the darndest thing. We get, it, it's funny to watch. You get 30, 40 fish swimming upstream until they finally there's the, the water's gone and away they go. And then they kind of hover there for a second and sort of look around and go, wow, this is great. And off they go. <laughs>